physiological adaptations to resistance exercise. The use of resistance exercise in rehabilitation and conditioning programs has a substantial impact on all systems of the body. Resistance training is equally important for patients with impaired muscle performance and individuals who wish to improve or maintain their level of fitness, enhance performance or reduce their injury risk. When body systems are exposed to a greater than usual but appropriate level of resistance exercise, they initially react with a number of acute physiological responses before adapting. That is, body systems accommodate over time to the newly imposed physical demands. Training induced adaptations to resistance exercise known as chronic physiological responses are summarized in Table 6.3 and discussion in this section. The key differences in adaptations from strength training versus endurance training are noted. Adaptations to overload create changes in muscle performance and in part determine the effectiveness of resistance training program. The time course for these adaptations to occur varies from individual to individual to another depending on a person's health status and previous level of participation in a resistance exercise program. Neural Adaptations It is well accepted that the initial rapid gain in the tension generating capacity of skeletal muscle from a resistance training program is attributed largely to neuron responses, not adaptive changes in muscle itself. This is reflected by an increase in electromyographic activity during the first 4 to 8 weeks of training with little to no evidence of muscle fiber hypertrophy. It is also possible that increased neural activity is the source of additional gains in strength late in a resistance training program after muscle hypertrophy has plateaued. The initial neural response to resistance exercise are attributed to motor learning and improved coordination through increased recruitment in the number of motor units firing and an increased rate and synchronization of motor unit firing. It is speculated that these changes are the result of decreased inhibition of CNS, decreased sensitivity of the Golgi tendon organ or the changes at the myoneural junction of the motor unit. Skeletal Muscle Adaptations Hypertrophy As noted previously, the tension producing capacity of muscle is directly related to the physiological cross-sectional area of the individual muscle fibers. Hypertrophy is an increase in the size of an individual muscle fiber caused by increased myofibrillar volume. After an extended period of moderate to high intensity resistance training, usually about by 4 to 8 weeks, but possibly early as 2 to 3 weeks with very high intensity resistance training, hypertrophy becomes an increasingly important adaptation that accounts for muscle strength gains. Although the mechanism of hypertrophy is complex and the stimulus for growth is not clearly understood, hypertrophy of skeletal muscle appears to be the result of increased protein actin and myosin synthesis and decreased protein degradation. Hypertrophy is also associated with biochemical changes that stimulate uptake of amino acids. The greatest increases in protein synthesis and hypertrophy are associated with high volume, moderate resistance exercise performed eccentrically. Furthermore, it is the type 2B muscle fibers that appear to increase in size most readily with resistance training. Hyperplasia Although the topic has been debated for many years and evidence of the phenomenon is sparse, there is something thought at, some thought that a portion of the increase in muscle size that occurs with heavy resistance training is caused by hyperplasia, an increased number of muscle fibers. It has been suggested that this increase in fiber number observed in laboratory animals is a result of longitudinal splitting of fibers. It has been postulated that fiber splitting occurs when individual muscle fibers increase in size to a point at which they are inefficient and then subsequently split to form two distinct fibers. Critics of the concept of hyperplasia suggest that evidence of fiber splitting actually may be caused by inappropriate tissue preparation in the laboratory. The general opinion in the literature is that hyperplasia either does not occur or if it does occur to a slight degree its impact is insignificant. Muscle fiber type adaptation 
as previously mentioned type 2 b phasic muscles fibers preferentially hypertrophy with heavy resistance training in addition a substantial degree of plasticity exists in muscle fibers with respect to contractile and metabolic properties transformation of type 2 b to type 2 a is common with endurance training as well as during the early weeks of heavy resistance training making the type 2 fibers more resistant to fatigue there is some evidence of type 1 to type 2 fiber type conversion in the denervated limbs of laboratory animals in humans with spinal cord injury and after an extended period of weightlessness associated with space flight however there is little to no evidence of type 2 to type 4 type 1 con conversion under training conditions and rehabilitation or fitness programs vascular and metabolic adaptations adaptations of the cardiovascular and respiratory systems as a result of low intensity high volume resistance training are discussed in chapter 7 opposite to what occurs with endurance training with muscle hypertrophy from high intensity low volume training capillary bed density actually decreases because of the increased number of myofilaments per fiber athletes who participate in heavy resistance training actually have fewer capillaries per muscle fiber than endurance athletes and even untrained individuals other changes associated with metabolism such as decrease in mitochondrial density also occur with high intensity resistance training this change is associated with reduced oxidative capacity of muscle adaptations of connective tissue although the evidence is limited it appears that resistance training for muscle strength increases the tensile strength of tendons ligaments and bones tendons ligaments and connective tissue in muscle increased tendon strength probably occurs at the muscular tendinous junction whereas increased ligament strength may occur at the ligament bone interface it is believed that tensile strength increases in these tissues from resistance training function to support the adaptive strength and size changes of muscle consequently the stronger ligaments and tendons may be less prone to injury the connective tissue in muscle also thickens giving more support to the enlarged fibers it is also thought that non-contractile soft tissue strength may develop more rapidly with eccentric resistance training than with other types of resistance exercise. Bone Numerous sources indicate that bone mineral density is highly correlated with muscle strength and the level of physical activity across the lifespan. Consequently, physical activities and exercise, particularly those performed in weight-bearing positions, are typically recommended to minimize or prevent age-related bone loss and to reduce the risk factors, fractures or improve bone density with when osteopenia or osteoporosis is already present.